What's up guys, this is Alex from Xtrades. Today I'm going to be going over my top 5 setups for the week. Um, I usually post my list every Sunday. Uh, I go over about 250 tickers or so that's in my watch list. I'll even show you right now. This is my main watch list. Um, it's got 264 names, but that doesn't mean that you have to do that. Um, I just go through names that I've been tracking for the last 4 years. And... Um, I pretty much dumb them down into, into the top five setups. So our first one here, we're going to go over ticker symbol MOS. So this is Mosaic. Um, this is actually uh, Process Industries Chemicals Agriculture. And uh, this is actually a pretty hot stock during uh, the Ukraine war when it first started. You can see back in February here, Russia invaded. Um, probably worries about supply chain issues for, you know, chemicals and stuff like that and it caused a big rip to the upside but right now we can see that it formed a downtrend line right we got one two three tests um breaks out a little bit does a back test and then we're gonna be looking for a little bit of upside um your ideal price target for this would probably be about 55 37 at this daily level um a price target too you could be like 57 10 and i mean I highly doubt this would hit, but this is another resistance right here. Um, for a stop loss, you're looking at maybe stop loss if it goes back under this downtrend line. So if price were to, here, let me get this drawing tool out. If I can find it. All right, so let's say it, you know, had a little fake out, went back down on the trend line, um, just like that you go ahead and probably stop out because your breakout would be invalid. Um, most likely it would come back down to the support if it did that. Um, there's even a drop base rally demand zone here. Um, if you don't know that sequence, it's a drop, creates a base, and then a rally. Um, a lot of times stocks will come back down, test it, rip back to the upside. But um, if you really want to time on this, I mean, you could probably deal with a fake out and really hold a stop loss below this demand zone low. So we'll go ahead and get into stock number two. This is CHPT, this is ChargePoint. Um, they're in retail trade specialty stores, it looks like. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's related to like electric vehicles. Um, I'm guessing they do like batteries and stuff, it seems. Uh, I don't really pay too much attention to what the companies do. I pay attention to liquidity, volume, how they trade, um, how much volatility is in it, etc. Yep, so it looks like they operate as an electric vehicle charging network. It designs, develops, and markets networked electric vehicles, charging system, infrastructure, and its cloud services enable customers the ability to locate, reserve, um, authenticate, and transact electric vehicle charging sessions, etc. So what I like about this stock here, we got an uptrend line. Uh, we got our first test, test number two, coming up for the third. This is usually where the trend uh, validates. So once you get test three, sometimes you'll see stocks try to hold up here. Um, it just depends. I mean, right now, you know, after Friday and after the job data, it, it, we got a pretty negative sentiment. Um, indexes we all got flushed. Uh, high growth got flushed. VIX went up. Dollar went up, etc. Um, so with this setup, it, you can kind of bet on a bearish, a bearish tilt to it. Um, you got a head and shoulders pattern. If you didn't know, it's also a bearish pattern. Um, opens up with the left shoulder, creates the head, which is like the peat. Comes back down, creates another shoulder, a fake, you know, fake out for bulls. Comes back down to the neckline. Pattern is validated on the break of the neckline. So not only do we have this uptrend line here, we also have um, it testing the neckline down here. So if this broke, um, precisely at $14, $14 support broke, it most likely give you a flush back to the downside. Um, I'll even show you where it would go with the brush. So we get the brush here. So if it broke down the neckline, it would come back down to demand right about here and it'd probably try to curl up right there. So you're looking at a price target of about $13.13, um, maybe just $13 even, something like that. But another thing is that this trend line, it's at the third test, so this could hold up. So this could be providing a call opportunity also. Um, 
just like Mosaic when we were looking, we were looking for calls on the breakout. Um, and you know, towards the end of the video, maybe I'll, I'll kind of give you a good idea of what to do for option contracts. Um, it'll also just be in my Sunday list. I post it every week, usually looking for like a 50 delta um, or a 30 delta for swings, etc. Um, and if you didn't know, your deltas and options are what's going to make up your dollar per move. So every dollar move, um, if it had a 50 delta, you're going to pay $50 per dollar move on the stock. Um, if you need to go learn about Greeks, I recommend going to read them. But anyway, so back to CH, uh, CHPT here. So, like I said, we'd be looking for like a 13 price target stop loss. Um, it'd probably be, have to be if it faked out here. Um, if you took puts, it'd probably have to be like $16 max. If you want short-term options, that might be too much. Um, it'd probably have to be, you know, Friday's, Friday's high, something like that, something tight. Um, it just depends on what kind of contracts you're taking. So 13 price target, 16 max SL. Um, not the greatest risk to reward if you did a $16 SL because you're only going for, you know, $1. $14 break going for about 13 bucks. So you might want to do like $15, something like that. So you got a one-to-one. -one. We'll go into our next one. So this is DVN. This is, uh, they're in, you know, oil energy. Um, and you know, after... The OPEC cuts, um, this really started to make oil, crude oil specifically, the specific comp commodity futures started to run. Um, you can even see it broke out a little bit here. I even uh, tried some XLE puts. I'm still in those. We took it at, at a downtrend line, which is kind of similar to this. Um, but what I really like about this is that uh, it's coming up to supply here. You got pretty strong resistance. Um, this supply would actually be a rally base drop supply. Um, creates a rally, creates the base, and then drops. You can see it reacted right here, came back down really hard, rallied right back up, and now we're back at supply. Um, this is an ideal area to short. So for price targets, I'd probably be looking for, if it rejected here, I'd probably be looking for like this 61.8 um, Fibonacci retracement. Um, so it put you at about you know 68 bucks, 67, 70, something like that, um, and that would most likely it would create that inverse head and shoulders that you see. So you got you know the shoulder head, and it'd probably make like an inverse head and shoulders before trying to break out to the upside. But that's just speculation, not confirmed. I've just seen patterns play out you know for years. That's just something I'd probably expect, and I would be looking to take profit, you know, at this area. Or at least you know sixty six dollars where this other um, shoulder low is. So we'd be looking for puts on this. Um, I'll even go back here. So Mosaic would be looking for calls. Um, CHPT we're looking for puts uh, with a potential of four calls if it holds up the trend line. DVM we're going to be looking for puts. Um, you do have a confirmation of this candle reacted to supply, and um, here I'll even put the label up here. So we got our supply, rally base drop, reacts to supply, um, gave a decent red candle. The only thing a little bit concerning is this MACD signal down here. You probably want to look out for that. The momentum could be, you know, not slowing yet. This could just be a short-term pullback if it happens. So puts on DVN. Um, you would also want to look at XLE, the energy ETF. You would want to see it go back within the downtrend line. Next one, Google. Ticker symbol G O O G L. Um, so this one has a downtrend line, pretty clear, right? You got first test, second test, test number three comes up to supply. This is a this is a drop based drop supply zone. So it creates a uh, as a drop creates the base, goes to the downside. Broke this uh, June low here. I'll even mark mark that for you. So this is our June low. Um, a lot of stocks actually bottomed here for a little bit, had a rally. Um, oh, it looks like actually this was May. So it looks like Google actually made a, a, a lower low sooner than the indexes because SPY made its lower low recently um, in June until it, you know, went under it a little bit recently. So this, um, I'll even change it real quick. So this is the May low. So you got a drop-based drop, base drop uh, breaks down the May low. 
um, has a pretty gnarly drop. Uh, ends up creating another base, uh, this time for demand. So you got a drop base rally, demand zone, comes back up to supply, rejects off of it, creates the downtrend line. You got one, two, third test. Um, this I'd be looking for puts. To be honest, um, as long as Monday doesn't, you know, have a counter trend reversal, you just be looking for a quick day trade down to demand. Um, it's not going to give you too much, so this would be a sh very short term trade. And another thing with this setup, I'm going to add an alert to the trend line. Um, oh, it looks like I already did. So I added an alert to the trend line in case it wants to break out to the upside. It'll give us a little opportunity for calls. And if you can't see already, I love down or I love trend lines in general because they can provide two different trades. So if you're trading an uptrend line, you can buy the calls off the third test, or you can wait for the uptrend line to break, and you can take puts. Same with downtrend lines, you're waiting for the third test, you can take puts at the third test, and then you could go ahead and uh, take calls on the breakout. So trend lines are very diverse. They give you, you know, um, they give you two setups, and uh, you know, and this kind of volatility is good to have other options. You, you know, you're, you're, you're going to have to switch at some point. You know, you're not always going to be right, so it's good to have a backup plan. So assuming that this put trade didn't play out and it didn't go back down to demand, you do have a breakout trade here if it decides to. Now we'll go into Google, or I'm sorry, we'll go into Plug. So this is Plug Power. Um, this is actually a gap fill trade. If you if y'all don't know what a gap fill trade is, a gap is essentially the open to the next day's um I'm sorry, the close of the previous day up to the next day's open. And what this is is a void where price hasn't, you know, had any trading at all. Um, very, you know, there's no liquidity here. And a lot of times stocks will come back down and try to fill them. Um, same if it gapped down, stocks will try to come back and fill it up. So what the thing about gaps is that they move very fast. There's, you know, lack of liquidity in the area and um, they'll try to fill pretty fast. And you can see on this ticker symbol TTD, we actually traded this at one point. I think we traded the gap fill down. Um, we have a nice trade. So, I mean, this is this is a type of setup you can personally trade all the time. Um, same on a gap down, you could trade it back to the upside. But we'll get back to plug here. So you got a pretty gnarly gap. Um, try to fill it a little bit. You got a negative MACD. Um, you do have an uptrend line here. It might try to come back down and test it. So it might look something like that and try to hold up there. So your price target would be, you know, at the trend line. Um, if you were to take puts on this setup, this is a gap fill trade to the downside. So you'd be looking at puts. Um, some people, you know, they'll try to buy calls or something at gap support, which is right here at $20 even. Um, it's just kind of risky because you know, you're, you're vulnerable at that gap. So we'll be looking for puts on that. Um, if it wants to come back down, you could be looking at calls when it enters the trend line, but um, it's not there yet. But we can set an alert. You just right click the line, go to add alert and trend line, and it'll be sitting there waiting for you. And you can see I got, you know, I got them set up over here. So whenever these hit, I might have a setup, you know, in the middle of the day when I'm not even looking. So you got plug whenever this hits, I'll be looking at calls, arc. Um, there's a downtrend line. Uh, if it wants to break out to the upside, I might look at calls. So you get the point. Um, you just add alerts of trend lines that supports, resistance, demand, whatever you want to do. Um, anything to give you an edge. So that's our five setups. We got MOS. We're going to be looking at calls. I'll go through them one more time. So you got MOS. They got the downtrend line looking at calls. Let it load up here. You get the back test looking for calls up to that. CHPT. Um, given a in or it's given a head and shoulders pattern, so you be looking for puts on the break of $14. Um, if it decides it wants to hold at this third test, you can look at calls back up to 16. DVN at supply, um, at that rally base drop supply, you'll be looking at puts. Um, price target back down here, SL would have to be you know above the supply high. Google. You got the downtrend line. Um, you got the supply zone. Let's let it load. Okay, you got the downtrend line, supply zone. Um, it'd be going back down to demand potentially. So your price target would be down here for puts. Um, we also added that um, alert for the trend line if it wants to break upside. And then we just went over plug. You're just looking for that gap fill trade down. Um, 
later, you know, down the line, it might be able to get the call set up, but that's not the focus right now. Next, we're going to go into the indexes. We'll just give a little overview of how the indexes look. Um, we'll go over SPY here. So what I really like about SPY, actually, um, I'm kind of a contrarian trader. I like to trade against stuff. Uh, you know, after being, when you get faked out when you're first, like, a, you know, you're first getting into the game as a retail trader, you get faked out a lot, and you're not buying at good spots. So I really like counter trend stuff. So I like adding at demand. I like selling at supply. You know, areas that, you know, retail traders aren't really trying to do. Um, with SPY, we do have this June low here that we ended up going under a little bit, but we actually closed above it, luckily. Um, it might be able to give us some momentum. Just depends. Go ahead and put this in. This is our June low. This is what I was talking about with Google earlier. Um, but uh, the Google went down in May, but you see what I mean with the indexes. Uh, most of them, you know, bottomed out in June and had that huge rally. So this has been a pretty much an inflection point. Uh, we dipped under it, total fake out. Um, this Friday actually ended up being a portfolio rebalancing day. It was the last day of the month. So I'm guessing a lot of people, you know, were buying into this. We had a very short term rally until the job number came out, uh, came out. The good job data um, made Wall Street pessimistic, um, made it seem like, you know, the Federal Reserve is not going to slow down or pivot, quote unquote. And, um, you know, if you've been following the chat, most people, you know, they're not believing in a pivot anytime soon. Um, inflation is still high. Um, the, the job market really hasn't tightened that much yet. And um, we could still have a long way to go. But that doesn't mean stocks can't stabilize, right? Um, you know, people might think that the worst is in. Um, we also have to go off seasonality too. So with seasonality, um, this is for midterm years today. Uh, this year is a midterm year. You can see in October, we rally about halfway through and then get a drop. Um, this doesn't mean that we have to follow it exactly, but, you know, this kind of does support that counter trend thesis that we're looking at here at demand. And this is a drop base rally zone, by the way. Um, you got the drop, crease the base, rally, comes back down, test. You'd be looking for it to hold up here. Um, if we did break back down this demand zone low, it, it's not going to be good. Um, that, that could set us up for capitulation and actually maybe actually give us a bottom. But um, it definitely wouldn't be good short term. Uh, it could get nasty. So we're going to be watching that low. Um, we're going to be looking for this to hold up. Hopefully it does. I would like to see some bullish action. Um, I would love to flip, you know, flip the trading calls more. You know, we did a lot last week. Our, our watch list last week was super fire. It was very good. There, I had about four call setups, and they all worked very beautifully. Um, you can see this week it's going to be mixed. I'm not the huge, you know, the biggest fan of, of these, but, you know, the technicals do line up and, you know, support our thesis that we just went over. So next we'll go into IWM. This is the small and mid caps. And you can see um, looking similar kind of to other stuff. It's, you know, got the downtrend line. Um, it's got a pretty nasty supply right here. I'll add that. Um, it's going to probably come back down a little bit further um, to, you know, test that demand. And um, maybe try to run back up to the trend line. Just depends. Uh, has the same, you know, looking uh, June low as SPY, except IWM didn't break under this yet. So um, SPY did break under it, but very briefly. So IWM, you'd be looking for it to hold up here at this demand zone low. Um, you'd also have to keep a lot eye on that downtrend line, you know, just like the others. QQQ, this is going to be a tech makeup. Um, this has all your popular FANG stocks, you know, uh, Apple, Microsoft, Netflix, Facebook, etc. Um, pretty similar setup to SPY. You got the June low over here, which is the key inflection point. Went under it briefly. Now we're back in demand. Um, this is a drop base rally zone. Um, not very significant, but it, I mean, we did rally pretty hard last week, so we'll have to see. Um, drop base rally, just like I said earlier, it's the drop creates a base and then rallies and then once it comes back to this demand um, you can go ahead and enter so we could be looking for it to hold up here um, 
and run back up to the trend line maybe if our seasonality wants to support that that we just looked at. Um, if not, this demand zone low breaks, it could get nasty and we could go to 260. And where do I get 260 from? So we'll zoom out a little bit. 260 is actually this 2020 um, September support. And uh, you can see that low right there. That would put us there briefly. So watch that demand zone low um, for all, all of them. If IWM reaches there, you're going to want to watch that demand zone low. Um, same with SPY. Uh, you, we're there now. We're going to be wanting to make sure that holds. Um, it would even be better if this actually holds up here because then you could you know, probably support a, a rally off demand. And next, we'll go into the VIX. So this is the volatility index. This pretty much, um, it's a bunch of SPX options uh, and other difficult calculations pretty much um, to create a volatility index or otherwise known as a fear gauge that traders use. Um, if you were paying attention in the chat the last couple of weeks, we were looking for it to test 35 eventually, it did. And then I was calling for a mean regression back to the 2022 average close. Um, I actually have data that I keep track of. So the 2022 average close is all calculated right here. So our Friday's close was at 31.35. That actually brought us up a couple points. Um, you can see the value down here is 25.95 currently. Um, it rounds it up to 26. So eventually, you know, the VIX does mean regress and it, you know, it will come back down and test, you know, the average. Um, maybe even dip below it, but it just depends. You know, we're in pretty shaky financial condition, so um, we'll have to see. So essentially, it's holding the uptrend line at a pretty nasty close Friday. We're, we're going to want to see it um, stabilize here for sure. If you want to see upside, you're going to want to see it come down. Um, if you're a bear, uh, you, you do have a good case of it running back up to 35 here. Looking for my brush. One second. I always forget which one it's at. Okay, here we go. So if you're a bear, you have a pretty good case of seeing it come back up to 35 and maybe finding resistance there again. Um, like I said, it just depends. We'll have to see where the dollar index is uh, and you know, see how bonds are reacting. TLT was just straight dumping. So um, if you don't know, that's the 20-year that's the bond ETF. I tracked that for bonds. Uh, you know, and when bonds are volatile like that, it, it spooks everybody. So um, you have to realize there's a lot of money tied up in U.S. Treasury. So um, it's good to watch bonds, pay attention to the dollar, look at the VIX, and especially watch the indexes if you're an equity trader. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm going to start doing these pretty much every week, hopefully, um, if not every other week. I'm going to try to find the time to do them. Um, you can see it's Saturday, October 8th. Um, Try to get it done a little bit early. That way I could just post it on Sunday. And then y'all can have a good outlook and, you know, good plan going into next week. So thank you for watching. Um, and I'll see you guys on Monday. <laughs>